welcome to the Pearls and Polish podcast. My name is Rachel and I'm coming to you from just outside Sacramento, California. This is uh, my little space of the internet where I talk about knitting, um, different projects I'm working on, books that I'm reading, shows I'm watching, um, and just things that are going on in my life. So welcome if you are a new viewer. Welcome back if you're a returning viewer. As always, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry and links to those are on my website in the description below, along with all the makers, designers, um, and artists that I talk about in today's episode. So this is episode 21. Um, as always, I've got my notes right in front of me, um, but we've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. First off, um, finished objects. Um, episode 20, there were, um, it wasn't a normal episode. It was a wrap up of March. It was the beginning of April and it was the mid April. So it was like two, three episodes all wrapped up in one. Um, so I don't have as much finished objects to show you, but I do have a couple. Um, so this is our wrap up of May. Uh, no, sorry, wrap up of April and kicking off May. So first off, I finished my um, Musselberg hat. So I wanted to show you the whole thing. Um, so this was all from one skein of yarn and I had some leftover, um, but it is done. It's been blocked. Um, but I wanted to show you how you actually like the, the perks of a Musselberg. So you knit this big, um, almost like a toe doing like a toe up sock. So you start the increases and you increase and then you knit forever and ever and ever in the round and then you decrease and then bind off. So you make this huge tube and then you flip one side into the other. Let's get that in there. And then you end up with this double thick hat and I'm gonna put it on. And it is just super warm and slouchy and you can roll up the brim if you want to. Um, so yeah, this is a Musselberg. I love the Musselberg hat. Uh, this is, I wanna say this is my third one I've done. Um, definitely wanna do another one. This one is for my sister. So the yarn I used is um, Slytherin by, actually it's, I think it's like Slytherin in Autumn is the technical name. But anyway, this is the Slytherin colorway from Ruby and the Yarn Co. Um, I bought this along with two others um, a last year. Uh, so this was always going to be for my sister and she said she wanted a hat. So here it is. So I think I'll see her next month. Um, if not, I will mail it to her so she can use it. So that's the first thing. Um, next is if you follow me on Instagram, which if you don't, you should link to that's in the uh, profile. Um, I do post a lot of kind of more like the everyday progress knitting, um, different places we're at. Um, it's sometimes it can be hard because I do work with kids like as my day job um, and just for their privacy, um, I can't show kids faces um, because they're not my kids. And then I just personally choose not to show my kids faces um, on the internet. Um, long story behind that. But anyways, um, so I can't always show like what I'm doing at work um, because I work with children, but check me out there on Instagram. Um, I usually, if I'm starting a project, I'll put kind of different posts up. If we are picking a new book or trying to pick yarn for just a pair of socks, um, I'll usually post uh, a dice roll there. So um, make sure you're on there. Um, but one of the dice rolls I did was for a tube sock. So um, I have like 15, I don't think 15, um, more than 10 um, skeins of yarn that I sent out to be knit on a sock machine. Um, and it basically knits it in a huge tube. Um, and so I want to get through as many of those as possible. So I hadn't done one in a while and I asked the friends on Instagram to help me, um, or no, I rolled for it. I rolled my dice for it. So all that was on Instagram. Um, so the color that came up was purple dragon. And this is by, um, 
black cat fibers. Um, the, the one in the US, I believe there's two, one in the US and one in the UK. This is the American one. Um, so it's this beautiful yarn, very bright, love it. So I had it knit up into this tube. Um, so and then I just went in and put heels, toes and cuffs. So I got my pair of socks. Um, so I just need to block these because they're still a little wrinkly. Um, but I had enough for a second pair. Um, one of my friends lives on the East Coast and she has very little feet. I have very large feet. Um, so I knew I was gonna have enough to make her a pair of socks as well. So I finished the first sock the other day. Um, so she'll get longer socks than what I have. Um, but there's that. And then I just have the cuff to finish on the second sock. So I already put in the toe, I already put in my heel, um, and now I just have to do like 15 rounds of the cuff and then bind off and it's done. So that should take me like 30 minutes. Um, so those will be done today. I'll get those blocked, dried, and then sent out to the East Coast so that she can have this. So those are my two, almost three finished objects. Like I said, not a ton, um, but still, that's okay. We Like we've said multiple times here, it's not a race. Things will get done when they get done. So I'm just gonna throw those on the floor. Um, next are my works in progress, my whips. Let me grab that. So I joined another knit along. I love knit alongs. Um, this one is hosted by Marissa of Fantasy Fiber Arts and Alicia, um, who is behind Alicia Plummer Designs. And we are knitting Alicia's pattern, Biblophile. Um, this is specifically number two. So she has a fingering weight one, which is the original, Bibliophile 2, which is a DK weight, and then Bibliophile 3, which I think is designed um, for more male shaped bodies. But anyways, I've been working on mine. Um, I've got it in my horse bag that my mom and daughters made for me. Um, so that was just special to have that there. But we are just trucking along. Um, so I've got the neck done. Let me lower it down. Um, so I've got the neck done. I've split for sleeves and now I'm just knitting the body. Um, so I tried it on last night and it fits really well. Um, so I had started out with a size 36. Um, so when you're reading like a, a garment pattern, it'll tell you the chest sizes of the finished object. And then it'll tell you how much ease. So a negative ease is you want it smaller than your actual size. And then a positive ease is you want it bigger than your actual size. Um, so for instance, if you're knitting socks, you want negative ease. You want it a little smaller than your actual size, knowing that yarn is gonna stretch out a little bit as is worn. For most garments, not all, but most, you wanna have some sort of positive ease. Um, so like if you're wearing a t-shirt, for the most part, t-shirts have just a little extra, it's not like skin tight. Um, so I'm a size 35 chest. Um, so the different sizes, it's kind of like a four inch range. So I could either do a size 36 or I could do a size 40. Um, and the suggested ease is zero to four inches. So you could knit your exact size and know it's going to be pretty snug or you could knit up a size and so it'll be a little looser. So I originally went with a 36, tried it on and it was like too tight. Um, I like my sweaters a little looser um, so it was just not going to be comfortable. Even if I blocked it really aggressively and stretched it out it was not going to be a fun fit. Um, so I decided to tear it all apart, start over and I'm doing the 40 inch sweater and I think this is turning out a lot better. Um, the colorway is Cliffs of, I want to say it's Moore? Cliffs of Moore? It's, uh, it's in Ireland <laughs> by Explore Knits. Um, I bought this in her Ireland collection, I want to say last year, and really love this color. I've been saving it for a sweater. Um, I had a different sweater in mind but I'm glad I went with this one. Um, so yeah, we're just going right along. Um, so the body, 
sizing on the instructions is written to like knit. Let me look before I tell you wrong information. Um, I have my pattern here in my bag. Um, I'm not really one who likes to just keep it all on her phone. Um, I like to like hold it in my hand. So hold on, let me find it. Page five. Here we go. Um, nope. Page four. Okay, so it says to knit the garment until it's the body is 15 inches. Um, so I typically will knit about half of that, try it on and see how much more I need to go. Just since every body is different, um, I tend to have a bit of a longer torso. Um, and then you also wanna think about what is the pattern written for? If the pattern is written for a cropped sweater where it's gonna hit at like your belly button area, um, if you don't want that, you're gonna want it more. Or if it's a really long sweater, if you want to have a cropped version, then um, you're gonna want it shorter. So I always like to try mine on first before I knit the full 15 inches and then decide if it'll work or not. Um, so that's gonna be kind of like my mindless evening knit. Um, since I have done all the increases, I've done all the counting, now I just have to sit and knit in the round for 15 inches. Um, so that one is progressing really well. The knit along ends, I want to say like late June, early July. Um, so I have lots of time to work on this sweater. So I'm looking forward to that one. If you haven't looked at that pattern, definitely check it out. Um, I did put the Ravelry link. I'm not sure if it's available on other platforms. Um, but definitely take a look. It's a great sweater, really well written. Um, so I'm enjoying that. All right, so May is kind of a busy month for us. It's the wrap up of school. So everyone's done with school like late May, like the 1st of June. So we're just kind of getting our way through the last of it and then getting ready for summer. However, I do have a couple of projects I'm planning to cast on. Um, first off are my May socks. Um, this is the Yarn Clubs for the Gods by Paisley Knits. And the colorway for May is Hermes. I can never say it without like some version of an accent. I feel like I have to make an accent when I say Hermes, like the scarves. But anyways, it's this really beautiful pale golden yellow. Um, I'm really excited to cast this on. Yellow is not my go-to color. Um, I really don't like yellow. Um, but I do like this version of yellow, so I'm excited for this. Um, I do have a pattern in mind, um, but I won't make like a final decision until I really open up the yarn, look at all the colors, and then um, wind it up into a skein, and then start that cuff. Once I start the cuff, I really have a good idea of whether or not my pattern will work. Um, but yeah, definitely excited to cast that on. Um, this is on her old coast, coastal sock base. So it's 80, 20 superwash merino nylon, 400 yards, 100 grams. Um, I know she's switching her sock bases to something different. Um, I'm not sure how different it is, but anyways, this is her old base. So that's a given that will start May 1st. Uh, so I went through my yarn stash at the beginning of the year and kind of put everything into categories. So I have year of socks, sock yarn, um, sets. So it's yarn that I kind of bought together um, and then like sweater quantities and then my sock tubes. So um, I hadn't done anything with like my yarn sets. Um, so lots of like two, three skeins that I just kind of have sitting. So um, of course I went on Instagram, posted some pictures and some plans and asked for y'all to help me pick out a project. Um, and the majority of the voters went towards the Soho top. Um, I don't remember who did it, but I'll put it on the bottom of the screen. Um, I know Bethany of Woolberry has done one and she is planning on doing at least one more. Um, there've been a lot of pictures of it going around right now. So that one is kind of in the forefront of everyone's mind. 
Um, so I got a lot of votes for that one. And then the second project I had posted um, was this garter snake cowl by Lavinia. I'm going to say her last name wrong, so I'm not even going to try, um, but it's down below. Um, but anyways, I've done that pattern before and I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to do it again. And then I had the end grain shawl um, by Sarah Opie and I have three skeins of yarn for that. The thing is, I did not read the pattern ahead of time to see if I would have enough yarn for the Soho top. Um, I thought, I looked at it, I said, look, this looks great. It's going to take two skeins. I'm not a large person. I'm not busty, so I don't need a ton. Um, it's like, I, I have enough. And last night I was looking at the pattern and I'm not going to have enough yarn. Um, so then the decision is, do I knit it anyways and just make it work? Or do I pick something different? Um, so I went through my stash again and I found a different set of yarn. Um, this was specifically for a sweater that I bought it for. Um, but now I'm rethinking and actually knitting up that sweater. So, um, I'm right now I'm leaning towards casting on both items and just slowly working my way through those. So for the Soho top, I'm using this like super dark green. Um, this is by the farmer's daughter and they're based in Montana. And I bought this actually, I didn't buy this. This was um, payment for a shawl I knit for their shop um last year year before and so this is their juicy dk base 100 percent superwash merino 274 yards 100 grams and the colorway is called mr pocket so it was this like gorgeous olive green um and then as i've kind of grown in my knitting i've realized there are colors that i really enjoy wearing as like sweaters and tops and and shawls and cowls and then there are colors that i enjoy for socks I would never wear this color as like a top or a hat or something on the top half of my body. Um, it's not a color I enjoy, it's not a color I am drawn to as far as like my clothing, but I would definitely make socks out of that. Um, I love bright, loud socks, um, but not so much my tops. So this is definitely a color I would do for my clothes. Um, I love these like dark greens, blues, purples, um, grays, blacks. Um, I did one of those like color profiling and I am a deep autumn. So the colors like this are perfect for me. So I'm going to cast that on. I do have enough in this colorway to be able to knit the whole top. Um, and then I have these. This is from Explore Knits, and this was her uh, Into the Wild collection that was, I want to say, two, three years ago. So this one is called, Ju Ooh, hold on, throwing things. This one's called Jeweled Vixen, and it is just gorgeous. And then this one is called Tide. And when she was releasing the collection, she had done, um, as she usually does, she does kind of like this live Q&A, and what are different colors you would put together. And she sits there with all these bases and all these colors and we'll, we'll put color suggestions together. So this was a suggestion that was offered um, to put Tide and Jeweled Vixen together. And I think that's gonna be gorgeous. Um, so I'm gonna do the cowl with these two. These are 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere and 10% nylon. So 435 yards, 100 grams. Um, that cashmere gives it kind of a little bit of a halo. It makes it super soft and super warm. Um, I haven't worked with anything that had cashmere in it. I own yarn that has cashmere in it, but I have never like worked with it. So I am really excited for this. I think this is gonna make a great cowl. It's gonna be great for winter um, because it's a bright, happy color, but also it's gonna be super warm. Um, so I, I'm gonna knit both. I've just decided now that I'm gonna cast on both. So this will go on the needles. Um, because it's a brioche cowl, that's also pretty mindless once you get started. Um, 
and then I'll just kind of divide my time along the four different projects um, and it should go by rather quickly. Um, I would like to get at least the cowl and the top done by the end of the month because uh, summer sock camp starts June 1st um, and I try and focus only on socks for like three months. Um, I have a lot of sock yarn as you guys know so I have a lot of stuff that I want to try and work through. Um, so that's the goal. Get through these as quickly as possible so I'll be ready for summer sock camp. So those are my whip or my soon to be whips, my plans for May. That's it for like the yarn content of today's video. Moving on to books that I'm reading. Um, I am about halfway through We Free the Stars by Hafsa Fizal. Um, she also did, hold on, let me find it. Um, we Hunt the Flame. Uh, so I've been listening to those on audiobook. Really enjoyed the first one. I'm really enjoying the second one. Um, there were a couple parts where I like wasn't paying attention. I was kind of doing other things. So I missed some kind of sections. Um, so I'm definitely going to go back and listen to these books again. Um, just because I really enjoy them. And there are some sections like, oh wait, I need, I forgot what happened. Um, but definitely suggest those. Um, next, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. Um, I think I've got like five chapters left and then I'm done. Um, so that has been a really good book. And I just saw the trailer for the movie this morning. Um, the movie comes out in November, probably around like Thanksgiving. Um, so I'm really excited for that. So I'm going to finish the book and then I'll watch the trailer again and then kind of line things up. Um, I have a lot of high hopes for that movie. Um, I really liked the Hunger Games movies that they did. I think they did them really well. So hopefully they're still kind of in that um, trajectory. So there's that. Um, and then I'm starting a new book. Um, one of the ladies that I work with, we read very similar things. So we decided we're gonna do a book club. Um, we're gonna read the same book and talk about it. So we are doing Caravel uh, by Stephanie Garber. And I keep wanting to con call it Carnival. And it's not Carnival, there's no N. I think it's pronounced Caravel. But anyways, picked it up two days ago, um, read like the first two chapters. I'm gonna go back and start it again and take some notes and I will keep you guys posted on that one as well. As far as shows, um, the only show I've been watching has been The Mandalorian. Uh, I've seen seasons one and two already. Um, However, I wanted to watch them over so that I can watch all of season three and remember what happens. So um, we're big Star Wars fans. Um, I'm not as big of a fan as my husband is. Um, I'm more like the this entertains me and I really love it fan. Um, he knows all the things about Star Wars. Um, so it's been fun watching the series with him. So then I can like pause things and ask questions or he'll kind of fill me in like, oh, this character is really important because of this. Or, oh, yeah, this character is from this series or from that book. Um, so yeah, it's been really great watching that again, remembering things and then getting ready for season three. So if you haven't watched The Mandalorian, definitely watch it. It's great. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's for little kids. Um, probably older kids could handle it. Um, but you all know your kids. I can, you know what they can handle, what they can't. So that is episode 21. Lots going on as far as stuff here at home. Not a ton. Same old, same old. Um, spring is definitely here. It has been in the high 80s to low 90s all week, which has been great. Um, but then it's like little reminders of like, oh, we need to hydrate. Like we need to carry water with us everywhere. Um, like we can't play outside right after school because it's still super hot. Um, it's little things like that. However, we still have all the pollen of spring. Um, last night I didn't take a Zyrtec. Uh, my husband needed like the last one, so I let him have it and I am feeling it this morning. Um, not bad, but like enough to be like, oh, this is uncomfortable. So um, I'm gonna go pick up some more allergy medicine if there's any to be found. I know everybody has allergies right now. 
pretty bad out here. Um, so hopefully wherever you are, that doesn't affect you as much. Um, but very thankful for all the rain that we've been having so that we could have spring and flowers and just growing things. So thanks for joining me for episode 21. Um, I'm proud of the work that you're doing. Have a great day. Uh, find ways to be kind and I will see you all for uh, episode 22, our main chicken. Okay, bye.